Welcome everyone to episode six of the Sky Temple podcast, an exercise in enthusiastic rambling about explorers of Sky ROM hacks. My name is Max Scherzi, coming to you live from the U.S. West Coast and from down under in Australia. I am joined by Yakuman. We have returned, folks. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's um. It, it's 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 sort of well for me it's not summer break for me I've I've had to keep you know living life and and doing routines and 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 you know having to go to work and and all that but um no how how was your how was your break how was your break no it was a uh, good summer times right uh like I like I mentioned on the last episode which was uh, forever ago at this point um. Went to two concerts and met up with uh, with some old friends uh, across the country. Flew out, had a good time there. Um, you know, very. I, I I will say this: this summer in general has been uh, been very. Uh, it's been very satisfying for me. You know, after the past the past couple of years for me, uh, summer has consisted of mostly working on Explorers of the Spirit and. Um, this year, I've really tried to take the opportunity to do shit, and it feels good. Uh, awesome. You know, didn't expect to go in that direction at the start of the podcast, but, um, you know, that happens, so whatever. Point is, we're back, folks. Um, <laughs> and uh, just the thing I want to say, now that we're, we're coming back, we, we kind of had some time to evaluate the start of the podcast. Um, so... We are going to slightly change up how this podcast is going to work because uh, the original idea, or part of the original idea for the podcast is well, for this to be kind of like a uh, discovery platform, or like a tastemaker platform for people who are um, coming into the scene to use as a way to um, get like a first glance at new hacks. But um, if we're being honest, we have like no viewers for this shit. So the likelihood of any of those viewers being people that are actually outside the scene is pretty low. So the the way that we thought about it was like, well, what's the point of doing this for a hypothetical audience that doesn't really exist? Um, so two things. One, this is going to be a, a little bit of a restructuring to have this make more sense, uh, assuming that most of the audience is going to be people that are familiar, maybe not with these specific hacks, but with Explorers of Sky ROM hacking. Um, so we're getting rid of the spoiler and non-spoiler distinction in this, and um, we are going to get rid of the, the news segment, at least for the most part, unless there's like something in particular that we want to talk about. Um, and I, I guess what we are going to be left with is we're going to lean more into focusing on uh, something that is also important for this podcast, I believe, which is preservation and the creator spotlight aspect of it especially which is ultimately what we want to do we want to give creators some kind of platform um especially one that could be archived for the future that can say like hey uh i mean in a perfect world we're talking maybe five years down the line like these were the people that were there at like the early days of pmd rom hacking because we are very much still in that Hopefully, you know, uh, under the assumption that the community continues to grow and we get bigger and better things that keep coming out. Um, just a way for people to really uh, talk about this stuff and us to comment on the early stuff. What are the types of things that we are saying about the early creators? All that, all that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have all anything to add? <laughs> kind of rambled for a bit, but... Yeah, no, I mean, I think... I think for... for um... You, you summed it up pretty well, um, Max. I think, you know, I what I really enjoyed um, over these last five episodes and, and all that is getting to know our creators a little bit better, getting to know the people behind the hacks a little bit better. And I think, too, like, this has been a great experience for me. I know you've played a lot more hacks than I have um, before starting this, um, this podcast, but actually, you know, taking the time to go through and, and seeing the types of stuff that, that people have created and not, not so much just reading the discussion about it and thinking, Oh yeah, that's cool. But I'll never, uh, I don't have time to get to that. No, yeah. I have to, I have to make time now. <laughs> no, but, um, 
and I think I think really that's for for me like even even down the line like it's it's something I I think and I think too it's 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 it sort of I think it's also a celebration for the hack baker themselves to kind of to kind of I know I know this is going to sound a bit you know a bit you know intellectual or a bit academic but to kind of reflect on sort of you know their hacking journey like what they the creative outlet that they have um and and to really just kind of yeah just just like you said a snapshot in time uh, no, no matter whether they are a really super serious hack or like we're going to be talking about today uh the greatest shit post of all time <laughs> <laughs> and of course for uh those that are watching on youtube which statistically is uh 99% of you, you already know that this is going to be about PMD abridged. Um, okay, l let me just jump in my first bullet. Uh, PMD abridged. First thing I will say is we're not going to be talking about the actual ROM hack very much in this episode. Um, and f for some people that might seem weird, for some people they, they might understand right away, but um, I personally think and you know you can refute me or back me up if you want Yako. uh but pmd bridge is a rom hack yes but um it, it seems like the impact of pmd abridged on um on on pmd rom hacking in sky temple however you want to word that uh in general is less to do with the actual hack but m a lot more so the community that has formed around it you know pmd abridged has uh it, and its community has kind of become uh almost like an alternative avenue into explorers of sky rom hack you know um and i i guess what i mean by this is if let's let's say on a practical level let, let me just say this first if you were to visit the pmd abridged community you will find some overlap between those and the people that are normally just um, interacting in, like, the official Sky Temple community, you know, um, using those kinds of resources, uh, having discussions about whatever, uh, contributing resources, uh, making hacks, etc. But you will find a lot of people who are interested in PMD Abridged and are not really interested in Sky Temple like that. But here's the kicker. After some time interacting with PMD Abridged, uh, through just the exposure in that community, sometimes they become a part of the Sky Temple community. And there's uh, actually a couple examples of this that we may possibly be speaking to on your episodes. So I don't know if we want to mention that. That's the, that's the thesis. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, Echo. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, I guess for those who, who I guess for our maybe ten percent of hypothetical listeners that may not have been exposed to these ROM hacks, um, PMD abridged the actual demo that you can download right now um, on the Sky Temple hack directory. That demo only goes up to chapter three, and it's it's a still it is a very rough around the edges demo. It was I think released one and a half years ago or, or something like that and since then there have been more additional content that has been created and uploaded to youtube the actual um pack itself the the cutscenes, they now go all the way up to uh chapter i think the expedition i think or chapter six the end of chapter six and at, at that point and so and so yeah it, it's it's really it, it's not so much about the hack itself it is about sort of like you said the community that's sort of popped up around it a breach is almost it's almost not a rom hack anymore but kind of a uh kind of yeah like a a pmd related kind of i'd almost call it the off broadway side of sky temple i know you i know you said that it's not an official sky temple thing and this you know yeah there's the venn diagram of of crossover between active users is is probably smaller uh, is is small, but I, I still reckon I, I still I still like it, and even myself, I, I'm on both servers. Um, I do like that it's probably become a bit of a 
an unofficial off-Broadway uh, sort of casual Sky Temple server where things are very chill, yeah. very laid back. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll go more into it, uh, hopefully, or in some way maybe in the actual, um, yeah, just discussion and, and interview later on in the hack. Yeah, a thousand percent. Um, and something that I want to mention as um, Desmir sends me uh, a DM asking when are we going to start. Meanwhile, we are uh, 10 minutes into recording, so we might be a little behind schedule, folks. Um, give me a second here. I'm doing this on live recording. I'm not editing this out. Um, here we're back. Point is, folks, I agree with everything you said, Yako. And uh, I, I think something about uh, PMD Bridge, because what we haven't mentioned yet is how, how, how was this kind of divide created? And um, I guess you actually did allude to this a little bit, that there's this um, scratch that, scratch that thought, not, not there is this. Desmir, uh, the creator of the hack, obviously, uh, if, if, if that wasn't clear enough by the implications by what I was saying, he uploaded these videos directly to YouTube, right? And frankly, I think this is something that we've talked about in, uh, in previous weeks on this podcast. There's kind of a pattern of um, YouTube really being what it always comes back to when it comes to discovery for creators. Um, using just Decimir uh, as an example, he would post his Discord link to the PMD Abridged Discord server. In the YouTube uh, description for all these videos, uh, happen to get, you know, happen to get blessed by the YouTube algorithm on one of them, maybe the first one, I'm not sure. Kind of built up a little bit of a YouTube community. Um, so that's how you, you get a subsect of people that know about PMD Abridged before they know about um, any other ROM hacks or ROM hacking tools or any of that, right? Um, especially because this is happening in like 2021, right? Uh, and, and, and by doing this, like Decimeter is not the only person to do this, is I guess kind of my point. Um, we just talked, I don't know if it was last episode or one before that um about explorers of hell like the the most recent trailer for that game uh is sitting at like a hundred thousand views now i think um and, and you know yeah i'll just i'll look that out for you <laughs> yeah we, and, and we had a discussion with um miju before and talked about her little like uh, shit post sans undertale video that's sitting at you know a couple hundred thousand views now you don't even need to get that many man like any any kind of like decent traction on a YouTube video, that is, I mean, in terms of avenues that have worked for for just getting the the random the the fabled casual audience that I keep referring to in these episodes, the fabled casual audience attracting them to your work that you have worked so hard on, it's YouTube, bro. Like you can use other platforms, obviously, but if 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 you are trying to build a community and not just like hemorrhage and not just kind of like restrict yourself to within whatever just the general Sky Temple community has been able to accomplish, which is, which is a lot. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but if you're trying to go past that, gotta be YouTube, man. And it's, it's not even necessarily that hard to get your stuff out there. Um, and, and, and another thing I want to add too. Decimir being the one that made these videos and being able to like build a community around this stuff. The key is like having control over all this, right? Because pretty much everyone who has uploaded a hack um, knows who PMD Gang is. This, this might sound like I'm going to be mean towards PMD Gang. I definitely don't mean that. PMD Gang has been awesome for the ROM hacking community. Nothing short of that, giving great exposure to so many different people. But the thing is, if you were, if you were, for your YouTube discovery, if you are really trying to leave everything up to PMD gang, 
Well, guess what? He has control over the thumbnail. He has control over the title. He has control over the comment section. He has control over how much that video is or isn't going to get uh, externally promoted outside of his stuff. Also, because it's uploaded on his channel, the YouTube algorithm is going to treat that differently than if a, a separate channel uploaded it. You know, um, he chooses all kinds of stuff. The upload schedule, um, or, or even what is actually included in the video. That's stuff that people forget. Uh, I, I can speak from, a, you know, just from my perspective. Probably the most important part of Explorers of the Spirit, um, the video version of that, that PMD gang uploaded had corrupted audio. Like, the most important cutscenes in the game had corrupted audio. If that was the only trace of Explorers of the Spirit on YouTube, then, I mean, <laughs> you, you, could, you could see how there might be an issue there, right? Like, that could be just what a random person thinks that the game is because there's no evidence to suggest otherwise. Um, so these are all things that, like, it may not seem like it could be an issue, but again, and I always, you know, keep in mind, I'm always coming from the lens of, like I said at the start, getting the mythical casual audience to embrace your hack, you know, em embrace Explorers of Skyrim hack, and get people to understand your creation that you have spent so much time on, because that is... That is the worst thing ever. I, I s try to stress so much. Why, why do you spend so much time on stuff that, uh, that gets no attention? You know, it's, it's kind of a crime. Mm. Um, yeah. And I don't know. It's, YouTube's the answer. YouTube's <laughs> no. the answer. YouTube is, is the answer. Yeah, and uh, just and, and as as of the recording right now, 132,000 views on Explorers of Hell. I think... I think it's probably one of the the most viewed hack related videos outside of maybe a shit post or two that uh, is there. But yeah, one hundred and thirty two thousand views Crazy, for man. Explorers of Hell and Heaven's fi uh, up two point trailer. It's uh, it, it's it's pretty uh, pretty pretty wild. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd I'd kill for that kind of uh, viewership on retold. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, man. And, and YouTube is random bullshit. Don't get me wrong. But even where you are, Yako, like how many views are you getting on your stuff? Because, I mean, even with what you have, you've been able to gather the same idea. There's a lot of people who, like you said, this was like their first exposure to PMD hacks, including a couple uh, creators, I believe, have said that. I don't know if they've said that on yeah. air. But um, a couple people have mentioned something along the lines of that. Like, and there's like people that are that that have like been exposed to your stuff and they care about it because it's like it's your thing, not because it's like a ROM hack, if that makes sense. You know? Um Yeah, absolutely. I think um yeah, and I mean and I mean even then, like, you know, my, my videos average, they sort of I guess level out. Like 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 I'm just looking at my most viewed sort of view count right and it seems to level out at about three and a half thousand three to four thousand like e like say i'm looking at say team skulls chapter has probably the same view count as the final chapter um and then maybe a hundred less than chapter two you know the waterfall cave exp like it's it sort of like maxes out and then you know chapter one which is where obviously people you know, watch the most because mm -hmm. you know. They, oh, I bet it may as well start from the beginning. That has about ten thousand. That that and 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 it hit ten thousand. It looks like a couple of couple of um couple of weeks ago, as of uh, August the twentieth of August <laughs> this twenty twenty two for those that are counting. But um, but yeah, even even so, like you you don't like one hundred and thirty thousand. You think, oh wow, I'd love to have the viewership, but I guess you know, yeah, there have been a lot of people. You're right that have been influenced. By, of rom uh, of rom hacking through stuff like watching PMD abridged or PMD retold and right. you know it's it's not necessarily about the view count it is about you know getting someone to have the cogs spin in their brain that goes oh wow this is this looks like a really cool idea i want to do that too like that that that's what kind of 
you know, how I got into Sky Temple is Paris Reddit posts, you know, and that was on Reddit <laughs> of all places. So, you know, probably a view count, the Mystery Dungeon subreddit, you know, probably has like, you know, 100 you know, likes, uh, you know, upvotes, you know, it probably wasn't that, that, you know, it's, it's, you know, a very small community there. So I guess, I guess, yeah, it, it's not necessarily about view count, but it is mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think the difference with Reddit too, is that if you're trying to, with YouTube, your, your shit can circulate around. Reddit is absolute trash Siloed. at that. Yeah. To, to be blunt. If if your post is over a day old, no one is going to see it. Uh, YouTube Absolutely. does not have the problem. Twitter also has that problem of if your thing is a day old, no one is going to see it. I mean, it's possible for something to circulate, but you have to get a lot of retweets immediately, which is, uh, I mean, I don't know. Personally, I think that's less likely than getting randomly blessed by the YouTube algorithm. That just happens sometimes, you know? That happens to yeah. old videos. So... That's just my take. Do we want to start talking about the hack? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. It should probably get to the point. 20 minutes in. Um, okay. So the bullet here says, uh, a reason why we are doing this episode uh, is because Decimir, creator of PMD Abridged, had a moment in July 2022 uh, where he announced that he was putting PMD Abridged on hiatus and wanted to reprioritize on uh, becoming an actual indie game developer and saying that it's something that he's very passionate about. He thinks that's, you know, his experience with PMD Abridged has led that to be something that he really wants to do. But August 2022, the rumor around the grapevine is that Decimeter is back to working on PMD Abridged. So what's going on here? Spoiler, that is going to be uh, an interview question that comes up later. I'm actually very curious what they myself. Um, but as for the actual game, PMD Abridged is an absurdist, very late aughts YouTube poop core um, parody hack of Explorers of Sky but with a surprising flair for the dramatic and uh, a and a lot of touches of uh, banality thrown in just enough um, to really throw you off once um, it, it just delves right back into the absurd. You know, a mix, a weird mix of high effort and low effort. Um, I think I stole your point there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I kind of already said it earlier anyway. Like, I call, I mean, I wrote here that it was the highest effort shit post you'll ever see. I mean, I, I kind of said earlier it was the greatest one. I mean, look, I, I, I don't know because I, I, you know, I, uh, I am not a well traveled person when it comes to the world of memes, but, uh, at least in my book, you know, it, 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 it's, it's extremely high effort for something that is, at times, you know, super absurdist, super, like, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, because I'm not good at judging this, you know, you know, the sort of post-ironic, I don't know, really, but, um, <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, it, it is, it is really just like, 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 it, it's not one of those ones where it's, where the plot doesn't make sense. Like, there is still a coherent thread that, kind of pushes the narrative like there is a sort of a narrative in the background um that kind of um kind of threads it all together still i mean it, it's yeah there's there's consistent world building in this game uh as well you know there um there <laughs> this is gonna sound really stupid this is kind of the beauty of this hack there's um consistently uh there's there's these two people in town uh there's just a, a fucking ongoing plot thread of um you talk to one of them and a text box comes up they just ask do you like meganium and the choices are yes or fuck off and if you say yes he tells you to go fuck yourself uh and if you say fuck off it ends the conversation and um, there, <laughs> there is a, uh, you go to the next screen, and there's a Meganium there. 
who uh, says, why does everyone hate me? Or something like that. So there's, there's all these just like running bits of like, like a literal war building of just like, everyone hates Meganium. You know, just li little shit like that. Like, like, jokes are jokes just to be jokes, but they are also used to flesh out uh, overarching stories. The, the bits never die in this game, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If there's a bit that shows up, it's going to show up again about 20 more times. It's, uh, yeah, and, it's and, one and, the, and, the one that, and the one that really threads it all together is that this version of Explorer's World is that everyone is into gaming and anime. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it's everyone's like, you know, half the people there like talk about who they main in Smash. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, guild, the guild chants talk about body pillows. It's just, it's just like... Oh, they're also named it? Club Crunchy Roll now. Yes, yes, they're called Club Crunchy Roll, and, and do they do they mainly talk about like? And now I'm not big on anime, but do they like mainly talk about like Naruto or something like that? Or yeah, or what, what, yeah, like, I, I rewatched yeah, like and refreshed like, myself on that. Some of the same there. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, everyone is into video games and anime except for Dinsdale. The, the the partner Bulbasaur who hates anime and gamers, and he he <laughs> likes to burn things and kill people with his rock. <laughs> yep, yep. The relic fragment, but it's not a relic. It's just some dumb rock. Vidsail is oh. a character that should not be anywhere near as funny as he is. First of all, people who've used this program will know that that is the default name for the partner. He just didn't change it when he <laughs> when he <laughs> made the game. He just left in the beta tester names. So Dinsdale, the default uh, player two, whatever. Um, you know he he says in in a a straight face. I that's part of the beauty of it. It is just the default portrait being said as he says <laughs> shit like, you know, um. There's so many great quotes, like, uh, you know, if I burned down this place and he was left in it, do you think that anyone would care? <laughs> you know, it says that with a straight face. Um, yeah. Uh, he's a... I mean, I, I mean... Oh, no, you go. I didn't have anything. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just I thought I cut you off. Um, I, was gonna, I was gonna say that um, I think equally... What I, I, I like is the player character in that it's it's almost like um, I like to compare it and look the one anime that I have watched and it was it's because it's kind of it's it's like Japanese humor but like clean Japanese humor because it was made for kids but Japanese humor turned up to like fifteen um, it, it's very animaniacs like in that there's like pretty much four four brace and. It's kind of like this this one called um, now I don't know if you've heard of you may have heard me reference it. It's called um, Bo 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 Bo. Now that and and what that show is right is you got all of these absurd characters fighting this super weird anime battle, and then you've got just some random teenage girl there just like doing like oh, what, what's that called like spit takes every five seconds, and I feel like. The player character is like that. He's like, dude, I don't want to be here. I just, you know, this guy's not my friend. I'm not with him. Can I go home? Like, that kind of stuff. And it's it's almost like fish out of water stuff. It's like all of this absurdity is happening around him. And he's like, dude, I don't know what the hell is happening. I just want to get out of this nightmare. <laughs> yeah, his, just... his origin story is, uh, of course, he doesn't know where he comes from, like an Explorers of Sky. Uh, but he mentions the last thing he remembered is uh, he won a game of Smash, and he had his neck snapped and thrown off a boat. And then he woke up <laughs> next, to, uh, next to Dinsdale, who yes. tried to uh, kill him with the Relic Fragment. Yes. And then he woke up. And he, uh, Denzel's very upset because, uh, they're always alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that about sets that, that up. There's other characters in this, which are really good. Uh, I, I mentioned that there is a, we, or I guess we both mentioned there is like a coherent plot and there's kind of a flair for the dramatic. And most of that comes from, uh, Bidoof, who 
uh, is now a a cool guy who wears sunglasses indoors. Um, there is a boss fight against him in this game. Uh, he is he uh, apparently knows about all the events that happened in Explorers of Sky, <laughs> from what I've been able to gather. Um, he uh, he's, he's he like, calls he's you like fat. Yeah. <laughs> Tubby, fat, you know. <laughs> he, he doesn't trust them at all. He's like, I oh, know, so I'm, I'm on to you. Like, and and, and like, <laughs> ugh, it's, it's uh. But then, then there's like a, a sub. There's like a subplot where, like, a Squirtle that looks like it's come straight from the set of the Squirtle Squad, and yeah. also like, wears sunglasses yeah, indoors. Yes, <laughs> and like. Suddenly, the Squirtle is, you know, Beedoof's, like, enemy. And and then, oh, it's... Oh, sorry. And, and Team Skull, too. Like, I, I'm still a bit confused. Like, are they actually do-gooders? Or are they, like... I, I, it's, <laughs> it's like... It's like they go to Apple out of the kindness of their heart. And then... And then well, I think I remember because I, I didn't get a chance to have a look beforehand. But like, is it that the player actually doesn't trust them, but then they are actually good guys? Uh, that is like, correct. Is, yeah. We beat, yeah, we beat them up senselessly. That's right. No, that's funny. Yeah, there's uh, Skuntank has a bit where um, instead of doing the a skunk spray thing, uh, he violently sneezes. <laughs> And uh, there's a point where he does that and kills Zubat. <laughs> does <laughs> not not kill, knock out, but um, yeah. God. But he never returns. Zubat has not returned yet. <laughs> Might be dead. Yeah. I don't know. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I just had a couple lines that I wrote down. I'm like, I just want to mention this. There's <laughs> one where. Beedoof is escorting you around town in Chapter 3, the, the town tutorial. Camera pans over to Duskull. Beedoof says, That floating dude over there is dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, it's like... Th this is what I mean. Like, this... This hack will catch you off guard. Because you know that you're... That, like, you're playing a comedy hack. Jokes are gonna be coming. But the last 30 seconds are like... Here's Krogunk's area, you know? Here's uh, the place where you save your game at Crossroads, you know? Okay, let's go into town. Let's see what's next. Here's dipshit. <laughs> Just so good. Um, uh, there's a bit that happens in the game whenever uh, Mutski, the protagonist player character, uh, encounters the dimensional scream uh, they black out, and they just start violently attacking everyone around them, which usually includes Dinsdale. Uh, <laughs> the first time that happens, Dinsdale wakes up, and he says, Wow, pain is weird when it's happening to you. <laughs> um, uh, in the YouTube uploads, this actually makes me laugh every single time. So when, when you, like, load the game... Uh, or not when you load the game, but once you complete a side mission uh, and you're sitting in the guild and it'll be like the next morning, right? So you start in the bed, you have a menu where it's like, do you want to save the game? Okay, so in order to get from the start of that menu to exiting out to player control, you have to do three button inputs, right? Uh, and, and while this is happening, the, the Wigglytuff's guild theme is playing in the background. Dun, 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 dun. So on, on those three, the dun, 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 he times up the button presses, so you get the SFX. One press, two press, three. <laughs> Every time! <laughs> The first time he did it, I'm like, was that on purpose? That? Yes. Uh, every single time. You go back and watch. <laughs> Every single time he times it up with the music. So stupid. Um, <laughs> also, there's a lot of like meta jokes in here, um, such as 
There's a lot of times where uh, he says could have instead of could have. Um, and there were a lot of these before, and people would uh, flame decimeter in that PMD Abridged Discord server be like, you know, could have isn't how you say it, right? It's could have. Um, and a lot of the could haves got replaced. And then at some point, um, he just said, fuck it. I'm, I'm keeping the could have in because fuck you. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a lot of moments like that, like typos that, um, if you try to correct the typo enough times, they, it, um, gets left in out of spite, so, it's a lot of, uh, and, the, and, 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 and in the playable, uh, in the playable demo, there is also a permanent text box too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I wish you keep, let the... <laughs> Oh my God. We, that's a, that's a I don't know if Jesse's have. keeping that or not. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, I will. All right, with that, um, you spent too much time. Let's get on with the interview. See y'all on the other side. Commercial break. And we're back. We're yeah. joined by Desmir. Hi. Uh, Time for the interview that everyone's been waiting for. Um, do you want to do this? So, <laughs> um, so I feel like we have to get this question out of the way. Um, get the unfunny stuff done first. So, are you a furry? Oh my god. I, I want you to answer that, actually. Give me your honest opinion. <laughs> um, I think who cares? Next. <laughs> Alright, cool. Established. Next question. Yeah, yeah, 100% established. Um, so, part of the reason why we uh, wanted to do this episode is because of the news that... You are returning to PMD Abridged uh, about a month after saying that you were uh, interested in becoming an actual indie dev. That's something that you want to do in the future. And uh, it seems that you have returned to Abridged. So I, I guess a couple questions there of why did you come back? What changed? Um, you know, are you, are you still interested in trying to uh, actually be an indie dev in the future, or do you think that this is like a, a first step for you, or what? Honestly, I've been on hiatus and a bridge for a long-ass time, I just never really, like, announced the hiatus. I guess after this time, I just felt, like, really guilty about never doing that, because I've not posted anything on, like, Twitter or, like, YouTube about it. I just felt like every day I waited would be, like, Another day I didn't do it, and I feel like it would be too late, like, every single day I waited. I don't know. But for the indie dev thing, I want to be one, but I don't know how to code. I've been trying to learn these past, like, few years, and, like, nothing I do works, so... Honestly, I might just hire someone to do that stuff for me. I'm trying to, like, learn art instead, because... I don't know. I, I need to do something if I want to make a game. I know storyboarding and stuff like that. I, I have a whole world planned out for what I want to do with my own game. It's just I don't know how to code, and I thought I needed to learn how to code in order to, like, start myself, I guess. But, eh. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. I'll just learn something else, and hopefully that'll work out, I guess. I don't know. I've been trying a lot of shit, and yeah. I mean, look. I mean, it, it's funny. Your story kind of fits fits with mine. I before Sky Temple, I had this uh, delusion that I thought I could like use a a common common tool for for making a game that you know, and and, and learning learning the code behind it and. And uh, and all that, and then I realized actually I had the opposite to you. I I could I, I would like I know how to code, but I just I am the most artistically challenged person you will ever meet. Like I was like I can't do this. I have no connections. I don't know anyone. I, this this is too much work. I've just I just shelved it. Um, but you know, 
I'm, I'm kind of lucky I found Sky Temple because all of that sort of creative things that I've had in my mind for like the last however long I've had it, they, they, I can, I can, yeah, the art's already there in, 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 in Explorers of Sky. I can use that, but yeah, you know, um, totally relatable. Funny thing about that, I also started like a part of the reason I started Bridge was like also learn how to code too. It, ah, okay. it didn't work out because it's mostly just copy and paste. People can definitely learn code from this. It's just I didn't. I guess it's just gonna be that way. I don't know. It's kind of fun doing it. I don't like coding much. I've come to learn that. Every time I try, I was like smashing myself into a brick wall. I guess I just wouldn't be able to do it. And I thought Skyto would like be able to help me. It didn't really, but I still understand it. So it's nice. It's fun to work on if you don't know coding. I did want to ask actually about about that because you know you you uploaded uh, the first episode of Abridged um, before August. Uh, sorry, before I, my uh, before my retold. So you you were probably the first Sky Temple creation to get uh, to go big a little bit, and yeah, you know, that was back in August twenty twenty. So how how was it like trying to use Sky Temple when there was you know very few people who knew and worked on it at the time you know just just really just the people who made it so really like like power and and end and tactics and stuff like that yeah, no documentation worth a shit at all at that time either i never joined the server when i started the bridge it was just an inside joke between my friends um oh <laughs> yeah one of my friends like you know that one dumb meme with a uh, like I don't vibe this universe, like that thing. Yes, yes. I think I've said it before, but like that's what kind of kickstarted or bridged. Like I want to recreate that one scene in Sky Tone because my friend said that I thought it was funny. So I he found like a PMD editing tool, Sky Temple, and um, I tried to like figure it out so I could do that. But then I couldn't find it, so I just started like looking around at Skytown to see if I can understand any of it. And I found the very first scene of the game. It was the like all the stuff at Beach Cave in Chapter 1. And I just thought, hey, you know what would be funny? What if I made this guy said this instead? And I just started <laughs> going from there. All of Chapter 1 and 2 was um, just an inside joke between me and my friends. But uh, by Chapter 3, I didn't feel like too nervous to join Sky Temple anymore. So I joined there and started posting some of my stuff and people liked it. So I just started picking up from there. And like, yeah, that's kind of it. I've been trying to work on it more, but now, at least back then, it felt like more of an obligation to, not because it's something I want to do, but it's something I had to. Because yeah. it was like this big thing now that people want to see more of, and I guess I felt a bit stressed. I felt like I had to keep working on it, especially alone. You so, say back then, has that changed for you? Uh, kind of. I've been doing it more recently. I've been trying to at least. I don't feel pressure anymore because I don't know. I always felt like I had some end goal I had to do when I worked on a bridge back then, but now I just feel like I'm doing it for fun, which is always what it's supposed to be about. I don't know why I, like, got myself into, like, this whole delusion that I had to work on a bridge. And I had to, like, keep doing this stuff until I finished. I don't know. I guess it just got to my head or something. I don't know. I want... I wanted to meet more people, so I wanted to keep making more of a bridge. But, like... Eh. I got to, like... It started affecting me mentally. It started, like, not feel great to work on anymore. So I just kind of went quiet for a bit. And I regret not saying anything about it. I mean, I have a bit in the updates, but, like... I never really said out front, hey, this is going to be on hiatus for a bit. I just kind of dipped for a bit. Mm. But yeah, this past week I've been working more and more on it. 
So that's that's progress, I guess. And from what it sounds like, you you feel like you're excited. You don't really feel like you're obligated to anyone. You're just you're just doing it because you want to do it. Yeah, fun. after spending enough time in like the server itself, I've come to realize that I shouldn't be doing it just to meet like more people and stuff. Because I already have all the friends I could like think of that I want to be with right now. I don't know. I just don't feel the same as, as I did back then. Maybe I, I kind of, I don't know, that's probably a lie. Maybe I do want to meet more people. Maybe I just kind of want to, like, keep meeting more people. I don't know. It's fun doing that. It's kind of exciting for me. So... I mean, you. I mean, you got you got the uh, the the creator of a Bridgetory dungeon to join your server. I I think I think they just pack it up. You're, we're done. You know, that, that's like that. That's like you know, that's like top tier celebrity level type stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. I love and you got so me too. You got the creator of Retold. You know, the the most famous hack maker in Sky. Oh my god, <laughs> just... you're right. You're so famous. Oh my god, you you have a, more than ten subscribers than me. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> one upload, Yako. <laughs> Yako, don't you think it's weird that clout chasing comes up on every episode that we do somehow? I mean, I I, like I, I, I didn't bring it up. I, I This is probably the first time I've brought it up since my interview. <laughs> no, I, I think Desi's the one that brought it up. I mean, oh, well, say, that, say that you're wanting to meet other people. That's... I. This is so weird to me. I feel like that's something that a lot of uh, a lot of creators really have in common. Is it? I, don't know, from, I just want to be what friends with more people. I started like I don't want to say like growing like kind of bored my own friend group, but I don't. It's not getting bored though. It's just like I want to see more people outside of this one server I've been in for years. I guess. Right. You don't want you don't want to feel like you're stagnating, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I've been there. Is all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. I think part of the part of the beauty of art is. Um, I don't know. I think in a way the 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 lesson you can learn is that um, it teaches you that you don't have to stagnate because you can't do this shit if you aren't constantly learning stuff. Or at least that's kind of what it was. That's that. Uh, another question. Um, let's see. So in PMD Abridged, you have a... Your style's very... Um, comes off as uh, very like lax, very off the cut. Um, especially in the earlier chapters, if you were to do it again, hypothetically, do you think that that kind of style is to our benefit, or is that something that you kind of ran into trouble with later? Because uh, we talked about how in later chapters you start to uh, implement more of like recurring plot threads, especially uh, as the more screen time that uh, that Bidoof gets, all that. You know, it seems like there's something coming more into the forefront um, and actually trying to do cohesive storytelling. So do you think that uh, these things kind of clashing the way they do is a good thing? Does it make it harder for you, easier for you? Um, you know, however you think about that. Honestly, I'll bring up Bidoof in like a, a second, but I want to say first, I think like chapters one and two and like a bit of three... I guess. No, 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 no. I will say chapters 1 through 3 are like when I was first starting off Sky Temple, it was kind of just an inside joke with my friends. I just saw it would be funny to like have them do all that shit and say all that shit. But honestly, I think it's kind of like to my benefit because I think it's kind of funny just like seeing reoccurring gags just keep popping up from shit that was just supposed to be a one-time thing. I don't know, other people like it, and I kind of like it when I just see, like, continuity in that stuff. Yeah, that's funny. It's not hard to, like, keep building off of that. What is hard is fucking Bidoof. 
that shit was like that was supposed to be like a one time joke with my friends like I said but now that it's a it's a big like I guess a big plot point ish now that's like part of the story I have to like figure out how to like keep writing him I don't have much of a plan for him but what I will probably figure out will be probably funny honestly I think I hope I don't know I don't really see a bridge as, as funny as other people make it, but that's probably just a person looking at their own work and thinking that it's not good enough. Because every chapter, I kind of try to one-up myself. And it just, like, feeds into this cycle where, like, if you keep doing that, then eventually you'll, you'll like, never be satisfied for what, with what you make, I guess. I don't know. I have to get out of that cycle, honestly. But, yeah. I've had fun working off of what I started when it was just, I mean, it still is a shit post, but like, when it was just a little small thingy, it, it's fun working on it. I like it. Yeah, the curse of perfectionism. Uh, mm. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you, just like you said, it can be really hard to see what you make when you're the one that's, um, damning things so often uh, that's i mean another question that we had written on here it seems like you answered that but um do you are you still the person that uh like does all your proofreading do you like run over your jokes repeatedly um and i i think the way that you've worded it before is uh rereading your own jokes until they aren't funny anymore <laughs> yeah is that I'm... still what you do I am the only person who writes a bridge. And okay. yeah, I I do all of it myself. And not the sprites though. All the custom stuff is done by other people. But writing and like world and like literally everything else that's not like sprites or like music, because obviously music's made by the base game, tune soft, whatever it is. Yeah. Everything that's edited basically I did. So yeah, it, uh, I laugh at some jokes when I go back to them after like a week or like a few days without seeing it. Sometimes I rewatch earlier episodes just like get myself back in like the head or like mm -hmm. the mindset that the stuff I'm doing is funny and I have to stop thinking that it's not because people definitely do like it and I, I, I guess I see why. Got it. So you, you do that to to like psych yourself up, then. Yeah, that's basically. interesting. That's that's a little like sports psychology, almost. You watch your own highlight real? reel. Yeah, yeah. Examine the opposition, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, the what's the what other shit post hacks are? What are, what are they doing? <laughs> I don't see much actually. Yeah, uh, I'm that's just true. <laughs> that's that's true. Ask Cucumber on this podcast. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, All right, uh, I got a question. Um, may maybe a little less serious than the last couple. Um, I want to talk about the text box bug. Any plans to keep it in the later versions? <laughs> no, I'm trying to kill it. It's horrible. <laughs> it keeps coming back how many, no matter how many times I fix it. I work on a bridge one day, and I check the bug is there, and it comes back. I know how to fix it. I, I just, like, I plop a bridge, like, into, like, what, I don't forgot what it's called. Some, like, unpacker or something, and I just repack it, and the bug is gone. And then I work on a bridge again, and I check if it's there, and it comes back. It's terrible. You should it just keep it. Me. I don't know what. No other hack has this problem. I I, I think you should keep it. it. It's part of the 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 lore of of a bridge. Like I I almost what think you should make it, it its own thing. What are my nightmares. I want it gone. <laughs> Everyone say, is saying it's part of like this deep. Like iceberg or something in the in the game. No, I, it, it, it's just there to torment me and only me. <laughs> it's like Skytop doesn't want me to work on a bridge sometimes. 
maybe, maybe we should get maybe we should get the Sky Temple Wizards to to to, to, to finally fix it. We'll get eight. We'll get eight X onto it. He mm, fixes everyone's problem. They can fix it, and I don't think. I think and like saw it once, and he didn't fucking know what to do. I just oh, I you're fucked, bro. Fucked. It's fine. I just need to like do that before I make a demo public, and then it'll be, it'll at least be like fixed for the demo, and you won't encounter it. It's a really easy fix. I just didn't know how to fix it back then, nor did I know that it was actually a bug back then, because. Nobody wanted to play test the chapters one through three demo. Absolutely that, nobody. That will make it hard for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it doesn't help that I released on April first. That, <laughs> <laughs> that might have been my fault in hindsight. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh, I remember you saying before um, some offhand comment that um, you wanted to treat the DMD Abridged story in a uh, very separated, distinct chapter format um, similar to a like a door. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Yeah. I so, remember that. I remember talking about that with you. Yeah. So my question is is there. I guess why is there a reason why you like that system and why why do you think it works well with PMD? Why do you think that it like fits the way that you write? However, you want to answer that. I think honestly, I think base game already did that kind of, and like I don't know. I really like the idea of like just having separate like shit that eventually like like all what's the word intertwines into like a big story or intermingles a new one i don't know how to say it it's i'm like drawing a blank here when i know what i want to say i'm sorry <laughs> like it's really cool just having all these different stories and eventually they all seamlessly come together into one big one and like having all those separate chapters be there like establishing characters and stuff makes sense instead of just like being random stuff that shouldn't be there to begin with like i don't personally i don't really understand the um the waterfall cave chapter too much in base game it just kind of happens to me i don't know i don't remember much of it it just happens and then you kind of forget about it until like one time someone's like hey we need to go back to the hot spring which happens like very late in the game yeah so i think the only reason that's there is just to establish that you can get there from the hot spring and i guess your psychic powers but that's already happening in chapter three so <laughs> i i don't know i think they just could this could have done more with base game and I kind of want to do that, but, like, also shit post with it. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. So, so making it, making everything feel more distinct is what I get yeah. from that answer. I also like just having, like, reoccurring jokes that happen for one chapter, too. Right. Yeah, that is, that does happen now that I think about it. Huh. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Um. Uh. Next question. What is your favorite scene in the hack? Probably the one where Wiggly Tough and Chat are just in a room looking at the whole list of shirts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone seems to like that scene. I see why. <laughs> I just saw the animation of, like, Chat Tot, like, looking at a list, like, for when he chooses the expedition members. And I just thought, hey, that looks funny. What for me to see now of that? And I just did it. That's great. I, I like, I like uh, my, my favorite one is, like, the one where somebody's complaining that their house is burning down, and then Chat Tot's like, oh, 
that's concerning. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> like the link, the, the link isn't made. Like between, like, like it's most obviously Dinsdale that has burned that person's house down. <laughs> Oh man! Oh my god! Oh, I have to rewatch chapter six sometime. I forgot I did that. Oh. <laughs> Don't let us speak. I've been working on the, on like, the little like time gap between uh, the end of chapter six and the start of chapter seven. I've been working on that and uh, Bidoof's episode, so I just haven't been. I don't remember much that happened back. I remember. Yeah, like, like it's like set and forget. It's like you know, I'm done. That's it. I've had enough. <laughs> like kind of. Yeah. I remember Next. like the big things. I have to like I have to keep note of so I can like keep continuity and shit. Yeah. But I remember like the Ram stuff in between that I just wrote because I was I just thought it would be funny. Uh, I don't know. There's just, there's just a lot of stuff that I miss. A, a lot of jokes I write and I forget about, and I look back and I was like, "Holy shit, that's actually funny." When did I write this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's making you pe- you guys laugh, though. I'm glad you enjoy it. So, so yeah. on to that point, I'm wondering. Uh, and I mean. It's okay if you don't know, because I don't know. I'm just asking. But do you think there's a reason why, uh, you know, there is, and it's different for everyone, of course, but there's the creator tendency to think that, you know, like, what you make is shit, right? Uh, I think that's a pattern that Yako and I have found with, with a lot of creators that we've talked to. Some, sometimes it's been conversations off the air of, like, yeah, man, I put all this effort in, and I feel like not anything, whatever... I know you said stuff along those lines uh, as well. And, like, with regards to your own jokes that we were just laughing at a couple minutes ago. So why... Do you, do you think that... Um, have you developed a way to kind of, like, to kind of separate that, I guess? Yeah. A weird question, but, like, realize, like, what is funny and what isn't funny without that getting in the way? Um, well, like I said, I just kind of rewatched the stuff so I can, like, psych myself back into thinking that it is funny. Uh, a way I avoid that is just, it's going to sound a bit petty, okay. <laughs> but it worked for me. I don't like looking at other ROM hats much because I always compare myself to them. And I think they're, like, 100 times better than me. And I just kind of get demotivated. Because I don't think I can, like, be better. Because I think everything else is better than what I have or what I make. And it just feeds into the mindset that what I make is probably shit and not great. So I don't really know much other ROM hacks. I intentionally, like, didn't be a half cham judge. So I can, like, kind of block... Oh, sorry. Kind of block out the hack jam so I can focus on this thing myself so I don't get in that mindset. Mm-hmm. I don't like being in that mindset. Every everyone makes like really good shit in Sky Temple, and I know that. I just don't like comparing myself to them because it's not fun. Yeah, I think I think I think you know it's it's something that. Yeah, again, it's something I relate to as well. It's just, um, I mean, I I look at all this technical stuff that people are doing, and I I think for me at least, I think what I've learned is to play to my strengths. I suppose, like what 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 is it that people enjoy about what I make, and that is the 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 story. You know, it's and. It's it's not so much. I mean, I am planning a more technically impressive hack later down the line. But um, for for me, it's like, well, you know, most of the stuff I've built, you know, it's very basic, very simple, and and I, I yeah, it's just it's not so much the technical the technical stuff that that people enjoy about it. It's 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 the story. It's the it's the writing, and I think. Yeah, you know, that that's where you and I are quite similar. I think, um, you know, we 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 don't we don't have like showy ASM patches and 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 you know 
funny, you know, safe data manipulation or whatever that, that other other hacks have. It, it, it's 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 just just people enjoying the content as they're being presented with it. Here's my like take on that. I intentionally don't want to get technical with a bridge because a bridge was always just supposed to be like when it started out. I just wanted to like make it just pm like base pmd but like kind of edit it but then i started getting like dungeon design and i started thinking hey what if i change the overall too so it's kind of becoming this own thing now except for main game but i really don't want to get technical because it just doesn't feel like it should be i guess that and yeah. i don't i don't know it so <laughs> i i don't really want to do that the only yeah. time i want to get technical technical ish is like with gameplay itself and making jokes out of it. Like there's something really funny Anix did once where he just like threw a gun at the player one time. I <laughs> I want to do yes. that the bridge. Yeah, I know what you're talking yes. about. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Like dumb shit like that I would do just for the joke, but I don't want to yes. like show off anything, especially because I don't know how to do it. So I'd rather just stay in my comfort zone and do what I know how to do and just keep expanding on that instead of, like, doing all these, like, big, grand gestures that ultimately won't do much for the heck itself. To that point, I want to... Before I say this, I want to stress for anyone listening, I understand there's obviously merit in going out of your comfort zone, you know learning new skills, applying new things, you know, ex you know, expanding your toolkit. Um, it allows you more creative expression. That being said, I think it's very, very important for creators to manage your scope. And um, this, is, this is something that we have seen <laughs> uh, every single hack jam we have had to extend the deadline because just gonna be blunt about it, creators don't manage their scope. They say, well, let me do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And then they learn about a new thing, and it's like, oh, well, let me just add this and this and this and this and this. You can't add all of it without it taking time. You know, like it's, 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 not, a, uh, it's not a perfect equation, unfortunately. You have to make choices sometimes. So see what you're saying about not wanting to get too fancy and whatever, whatever. I think sometimes it's necessary to do that. You have to pick and choose what you want to add if you want to have something tangible out. And it sounds like that's kind of what you value. Am I right? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I like lost you a bit there. Is, is that something that you... Is that like what you put a lot of emphasis on? Like having, having something actually out there, you know? Is that what gives you that intrinsic satisfaction? What gives me satisfaction is making people laugh at my dumb jokes. As long as I can do that, I'm happy with a bridge. Well, I think mission accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've still got, what, how many chapters left to go? 14? Uh, look, it, it's, it's, it, look, I mean, you've done more than, than you know, most I've, I've seen. You know, you, there's more content out there than you think in terms of what you've made like you, you really don't don't sell yourself short that, that that's my advice to you look at me know. giving I you just, giving you advice i just keep me look at everything i have left to do and i just don't sometimes i don't think about how much i've already done like there's all these hats that have so much to them and a bridge is just kind of a text edit that's why i think sometimes i know it's it's kind of basically that, but it makes people laugh, and I'm happy with that. And I should be, like, fine with that, but, like, sometimes I feel like I should do more, which is why I don't want to get too technical, because, one, like I said, it's outside of my comfort zone. I know you said you should definitely be, like, trying to go out of it, too, to, like, for, like, more creative liberties and stuff. But I want to stay in mine, because... I just want to do what I want to do. I don't want right. to be working on this forever. Yeah, definitely nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, like I was saying before, I think it's important to to manage your scope. 
and not have yeah. things get out of control. Um, because all of a sudden, if you there's a project that you're planning on completing in a year, if you add enough features, well, you know, all of a sudden that turns into three years, and maybe things get a little more unrealistic for you. Um, but yeah, it sounds like you know what you want to do. I think that's a big step. I want to do, yeah. I just need to like ignore. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Ignore, like, all these big technical things that other hacks do, so I don't feel tempted to put it in a bridge. So I can just keep it, like, kind of simple, but, like, I guess simple, like, technically-wise. Like, I still spend... For dungeon design itself in a bridge, it takes me a week to, like, edit the dungeons. Because I tried to, like, keep it fair and not, like, too crazy. I want it to be, like, more difficult than base game, but, like, difficult enough that it just makes you use items instead of just hoarding them. That's all I want to do, really. Mm -hmm. uh, dungeon, I... Not gonna lie, dungeon design is my least favorite part of ROM hacking. Like, it's, it's such a such a chore. <laughs> I mean, oh, I, it's I hard. It. I, love, I love game design so much. It's really fun for me. Yeah, it's hard, man. Yeah, oh. I don't regret having seal one shot people on accident because it became an inside joke in a bridge now. <laughs> I honestly, I honestly fixed it because I didn't know he could do that. Because in my testing, that nobody else wanted to play test for me, <laughs> he never one shot me, so I thought it was fine. So I can I can get what Desi is implying here is that he wants play testers. I'm not sure if if, if yeah. you you uh, realize that I don't he was. Know if anyone knows that yet? <laughs> I'm play it like a few dozen more times, just in case. Because apparently nobody got the memo the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so to your to your point, um, I said this a long long time ago, but about um, not wanting to like play other hacks let me say first i've both of you mentioned that i have certainly been in this position but i was in that position when i was deep in the the dev process you know when um i did the majority of um the crunching for explorers of the spirit just gonna talk about it for what it is uh from probably around like this point last year, uh, up until March when it came out, I did not play any other ROM hacks. Or uh, I think I maybe tried to play some of the the fall hack jam hacks that I you know had just very short patience with all of them. Uh, you know, there's probably some correlation there because I was a little stressed out and stuff. But also just the idea of exactly what you guys were saying of like. I don't, I don't want to look at anyone else's shit. I don't want to get discouraged by anything. Um, you know, I, I, know, I know what I want to do. And I think that's kind of the key. Because outside of that point, I would play other hacks, and I would think, oh, well, here's an idea I can steal. You know what I mean? But when you're in the middle of doing that, and you already know what you're going to do, I kind of tend to agree with you guys. I don't know how much it helps to compare yourself to others, right? Like, once you already have your plan in place. I think that's the difference, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think, I think, I think I, I agree. Like, it's, it's certainly, like, for, for me, right, like, and, and when, when I was sort of in the middle of making retoll and everything and, and seeing, oh, I think I got, I, I did get a little annoyed on two fronts. One, that... I was kind of locked into something that I had already tangled so much that I could never make playable. And, you know, seeing people release all of these playable hacks and, and all that. And then the second was that, oh, look, look at all of these, like, features that people are putting in their hacks, you know, ASM patches and, and, and all that and, and the fragments hacks and, and everything. And it's like... Well, all I've got is a YouTube series that's not playable, that's just editing the story, and it, it's kind of like, it, it does, it, it kind of, if, if you focus too much on it, you, you can kind of feel a bit, a, a bit like that your hack isn't as impressive, it, it's, it's, you know, 
you know, because of those, those facts, it's, it's, it is really interesting. I think, I think I've sort of lost that now myself. Um, uh, and, 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 and all that Had, having been in jury for, for the, for the, for the, for the hack jam three. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I totally, I totally get where, where you are coming from there. Um, just yeah, my own two cents on that. I know this is Desi's interview, but I thought I'd answer that, I'd address that as well. If you want me to stroke your ego a bit, I am kind of <laughs> jealous that you got really fucking far in Rito, and I'm still in chapter six. But that's kind of like my front, my problem because I didn't really work on a bridge ah, for like a few months because I was in this whole like depressive phase. Mm. But yeah. What were you? What were you talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. know. Kind of I, in conclusion, I guess my um, unsolicited advice would be: so the cycle you're in right now, it's like working on a bridge. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with your stance to not pay attention to other hacks because I think eventually what you're going to end up getting is, you know, that feeling of insecurity. Yeah creeping up because it's happened to probably literally everyone i imagine if we were to ask everyone who's been on this show and everyone who's going to come on the show later they would say they've had that experience um maybe we should make that a recurring question i don't know um it would be a good question honestly but but i I think when you're when you're not working on it there's definitely merit to seeing what other people have done, especially for like you're saying dungeon design and stuff, because every, I mean, everyone has their own take on it. You know, it's not even close to like solved, you know, with how many hacks there are, there's just wildly different interpretations of what you can do. You, you just get so many ideas, or at least that's something that I did during spirit development, like playing a lot of other hacks. And then it's like, wow, look, all these cool Gameplay ideas. And maybe it's just, like, whatever you think that you're lacking right now. Like, I don't really have an idea for what to do for this part. So, I don't know. It's just, like, random stuff like that. That makes sense to you. But I think yeah, there's a time for it. Yeah, I'll probably play other hacks when I'm, like, later down in a bridge of development. Just not right now. When I'm a little insecure little baby about my own <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's a, a time for all of us in ROM hack development when we're just insecure little babies. <laughs> Pretty much. So, with that said, um, we are... We have finally arrived at everyone's favorite recurring segment in this podcast. Uh, Decimeter, in 30 seconds or less, tell me, why is PMD Abridged going to win Hack of the Year? Hack of... Um... It's funny. It's better than retold. Um, I'm working on it, so that means it's one of the best hacks ever made. That was excellent. <laughs> well under 30 seconds. I think that was under 10 seconds. That's insane. <laughs> and uh... I like this rivalry we got. We, we we got this rivalry. You see, it's it's it's. it's it, he, he didn't yeah, mention he's... it that much, but. It's 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 there, right? You know, yeah, we've, look, we've been we've been battling we've been battling view counts and subscriber counts for uh, you know uh, he he may have he may have started in August in August of 2020, but you know when I came in in October 2020, I just the rivalry began. <laughs> and the leave. only reason, okay, scoop. Here's an inside scoop. The only reason why I made retold was to crush abridged. Yeah, but I just want to Truth tell you, I said this before in this podcast, we are at very close in subscriber count, and it took you <laughs> all this time to, like, get up to me. All it takes, Yako, is one upload. Watch your back. I'll catch up. That, that could be your motivation. You know, get chapter seven, like, for, you know, th- 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 this is your obligation now <laughs> to beat me. I'm not even working on chapter 10. I'm trying to work on the demo again for chapters 1 through 6. I just... Back then, I just... Oh my god! Every time I talk! <laughs> I am trying to work on chapters 1 through 6 because I was trying to... I want to do, like, every three chapters is like, a demo for everything I've made. 
Mm. I don't know how well that's going to work, but I kind of want to get that out before I start continuing on Chapter 7 with the whole Expedition arc. So I think it's a good point to have another demo out. I just need to actually get it all done. Sounds Plus, good. I think it's also neat to have the Bidus episode there be as a bonus. Sounds good. I uh, I think we have our episode or our title for this episode: podcast beef. And um, <laughs> that's the one last thing you want to tell everyone before we go off the air. I love all of you. Thank you for being here. Excellent. Thanks all for listening to the Scott Temple Podcast episode six. Uh, we are going to go back to uploading every two weeks after this. Thank you all, and uh, see you next time. Yeah, no worries. And in the words, and in the words of the uh, Club Crunchyroll, don't fuck with the tough. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs>